And welcome back. Uh, we're now at part three of this week's New Comics Bitches! Uh, so, um, you'll have to kind of forgive me for the tangent that I went off there, but every once in a while I think that it is actually a good idea to discuss uh, what what actually keeps us coming back. I mean, because you out there who watch this, I'm, I, I think part of you actually just watch it because you think I'm a wacko. <laughs> um, uh, and or I'm pretty knowledgeable about what I'm talking about. Uh, and I'm passionate about it. And I, and I appreciate that. And God love you for, uh, and I love you for, um, for watching. Um, and then of course there are some of you who do watch it because you like comic books. Um, so I think it's good to keep that discussion alive. You know? So anyway, moving ahead. Uh, Wonder Woman, number six. Uh, this has been one of my favorite books of the New 52. Um, Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang were just killing it on this uh, on this series. However, um, now Cliff Chang uh, has departed this book for a bit. He will be coming back. Um, we have uh, Tony Akins uh, in uh, in Cliff's place right now. Um, I have a problem with this issue. This issue as a whole was kind of a disappointment. Uh, because A, I'm not really too sure of some of the characters. It, it took me a while to identify who some of them were. Um, and B, this just confused the living hell out of me. I just, I couldn't get to a point where it's like, I can't follow what is going on. I mean, it just it was like blanking out. I'm like, I, I honestly, I don't understand what's happening here. And that made me feel bad because normally it's been, uh, I mean, it's it's still a pretty exciting read. I, I, I appreciated the read of it. You know, this new character of Lennox, I don't know who he is and I'm, I'm anxious to find more out about him. Um, and, you know, the kind of confrontation between Hades and Poseidon and Hera um, and everything kind of going on with, uh, with Zola. Uh, it, it just, um, I didn't, uh, it, it seemed a little bit short, seemed a little bit scattered. I'm not a huge fan of Tony Aiken's art. Uh, I do understand that he's kind of taken it upon himself. He's like... The closest to the aesthetic of what uh, of what Cliff was doing, but it just doesn't match up. Again, it's kind of like, uh, for instance, to me, what Amy Reader is doing right now on Batwoman. It's not the same artist, but the art itself is similar. So I think they're trying to kind of sell it on that. Um, and it didn't quite work out so well with Amy Reader, and it's really not working with Tony Akins either. Um, this issue was uh, a solid two and a half out of five, um, leaning more towards three, but still, it, it's not quite there. Um, it was just it was just too kind of confusing from the get go. It was scattered. I felt that uh, there was just too. Um, you know, when you get a, a kind of a pale comparison of a of an artist to temporarily at least do a book, it does hurt the overall flow of the book. Um, you know, if it had been a complete change and they went to a completely different aesthetic, I would almost appreciate that more, even if I didn't particularly like it. But at least I say, okay, well, they're going in a different direction here. Um, but they're staying in the same direction, it's just inferior. So uh, that kind of upset me. So either way that you cut it, it just wasn't a very good book. Uh, so like I said, solid two and a half for, uh, uh, for Wonder Woman number six. Um, and now we have here Catwoman number six. Um, again, still, you know, incredibly, you know, still a very controversial uh, title um, because it is a lot of uh, uh, kind of you know what seems to be you know some hypersexualization of women um, 
you know, I had remarked on the previous issue that there was just way, way too much going on. I didn't care for it at all. And it was, it wasn't so much there was so much going on, but it was just happening at such a, an intense speed. It didn't pull itself, I, it didn't throttle back at all during the issue. And it, it felt like, okay, but this, uh, Winnick definitely brought this more back onto track here. Now, uh, Guillaume March, who is, I mean, to be honest, he, if I'm going to be honest, he's an artist I really, really like. I really like his Catwoman. I know that uh, she's, you know, definitely a little bit uh, sexier in terms of what is kind of classically considered to be uh, sexy, I, I guess, uh, rather than like Darwin Cook's. Uh, work on on Catwoman is certainly not anything like uh, what you know we saw in the '90s with uh, you know Catwoman. Basically, you know she was just naked and had the the purple suit just like painted on her. That was just ridiculous. I mean, you could tell that she's in you know a vinyl suit, um, and it does complement her body quite well. Um, but you know, we here we have you know she's facing off against corrupt cops. And, uh, you know, it's kind of getting the shit smacked out of her by, uh, well, at least, you know, it's, it's a female character that's doing the beating and it's pretty interesting villainous, uh, this, um, uh, this reach, um, and how Catwoman escapes from this is pretty unique, uh, but it's a good character moment for Catwoman. And then of course we have, you know, as what we see on the cover here, an eventual, you know, an eventual confrontation between Batman, Bruce Wayne, Batman, and Catwoman. Uh, the the discussion is pretty frank. Um, that you know, she felt that maybe uh, that they were, while you know, since they were having sex, uh, you know, essentially having this kind of you know, almost kind of last tango in Paris ish relationship that um, they you know that they were uh, safe from one another uh, that as long as they didn't cross paths too much but what's interesting about the psychological uh, undertones of this of this issue and their fight is that it's not so much about uh, them injuring each other because they're already pretty damaged people. Um, but it's more about them not wanting to injure the other and almost wanting to get, well, at least in the case of Catwoman, wanting to get hurt herself. And, you know, when there is that really great moment in the book where Batman finally kind of has her pinned and you know, asks her, do you want to die because of all the risks that she's taking and just doing all of these things that seem to be very dangerous even for her. And she answers it with, maybe I do. And it's a very telling moment of these two characters where they, they have this kind of, it's still very forbidden and not, you know, it, it is, you know, a tale of kind of star-crossed lovers, even though they're not in love uh, strictly. I think that they could be. I think that is something. I think that Bruce Wayne knows this is probably the only woman out there for him that really can understand him and that he understands her. Um, so to me, I mean, this book... Uh, when it comes to the relationship between Batman and Catwoman, I think it's a particularly well done uh, kind of pseudo tragic love story uh, between these two. Because I don't think for either of them it's just about sex, um, but they are human, and I think that they do need that kind of release every once in a while. Uh, so I think that's kind of where it goes. So uh, I would say this is a, you know uh, this is a four out of five. Very solid, very well done. Um, it doesn't quite get to. It feels again kind of abbreviated. Like there's, 
uh, a lot of art and it's just not quite so dense. Uh, it's kind of as, as dense as I guess I, I would like it to be. So um, that's my that's why we have four out of five. So on to kind of our picks of the week here. Um, so we have uh, Winter Soldier number two. Uh, this is a fantastic series so far. Uh, you know, with only two issues down, uh, it's, it's it's pretty damn good. This is a very very solid four and a half out of five. Basically, what we've got here, what this, what's going on here, is that we've got these characters. Uh, you know, it's this is a, a, a really dense and very well drawn. By the way, um, I didn't, I, I wasn't a huge fan of Butch Kais's art before, but I don't know what I don't know if things just really changed all of a sudden. But it got a lot better to for me to watch and for me to look at for me to watch for me to look at. Um, it has a much more dynamic flow to it. It's uh, it's a uh, it's very cleverly laid out from panel to panel. It's a little Starenko esque. Um, I think that it's you know done very smartly. You know we have you know it's you know this th these are black ops people. These are people who live within the shadows. You know they walk between the raindrops, that kind of stuff. And that's one of the things that is so appealing about these about this book um, is that there's a lot of really shadowy stuff going on here and it's that world that is so fascinating to me and that's why I'm so glad that there is finally a Winter Soldier solo book out there because it allows us to explore okay well this is what it's like for uh, you know in, in this world, this is a world that we don't see too often, which is the, you know, because we, you know, we kind of talk about, you know, we have a comic like Secret Avengers, which is, you know, kind of like the secret ops uh, organization of the Avengers, you know, kind of a splinter group that is more of a secretive team. You know, they call it Black Ops. And even X-Force, you know, an uncanny X-Force, they're regarded as kind of a Black Ops, you know, unit of their own. But this is really, truly Black Ops. These are people who are, Matt. They're not just, uh, they're not just assassins uh, like X Force would kind of be. Uh, they're not just spies, you know, kind of you know, high-profile spies, if you will. Um, these are people who truly do walk, act, and think silently. And that's one of the tremendous things about this book. Um, so it's, it's another five out of five for uh, Winter Soldier number two. It's just it's a fantastic book. I can't wait for more. Um, it's really everything that I've wanted out of uh, out of a Winter Soldier book. Um, so we're gonna stop it right here, and we're gonna come back, and we're gonna talk about uh, our other uh, books of the week, and we're gonna talk about the contest. Okay, so stick around. It's going to still get it's going to get even better. I promise.